Welcome back to another video on one of my favorite selling models for Amazon, and that is bundling. I'm really excited for this video because I'm about to take you guys through a live demo of where I'm able to come up with really good ideas for my bundles and then put them together to make sure that they're going to sell for a profit. But first, if you missed the other videos in this bundling series, I'm going to link the first one right above because I go through step by step to explain to you exactly what bundling is and the right way to go about doing it. So if you haven't caught those videos yet, click the link right above to check them out. And now let me show you exactly how I'm able to come up with really good bundles to sell on Amazon. We've been working really hard on this new feature and I'm so excited to be sharing it with you guys today. So from the Profit Guru dashboard, we're going to come down here to the bundle ideas. This is where I come to get some great ideas for products that are doing really well and that can bundle together and sell really nicely together, complementing each other. So you probably already know that if you go on Amazon and you look at a specific product listing, if you scroll down, most listings have an area that says frequently bought with or buy with. Our software analyzes this data. And what it does is it tries to find variations where products are pointing to each other. So you'll notice that the bundle ideas that we're putting together from analyzing this data is in threes. And how we come up with these three products is by finding connections between them. So for example, we'll call this one A, B, and C. If product A is pointing at both B and C, that's good. If product B is pointing at A and C, now the stronger connection is forming. And if product C is pointing at both A and B, that's a really strong connection that these three things are bought together very frequently and they go together good in a set complementing each other. And that's one of the factors that plays into part when you're looking at the opportunity score. The better these products are pointing at each other, that will increase the score. You'll notice that it goes from one to five stars. So five stars is obviously the best score. Something else that plays very heavily in this score is the BSR and the estimated number of sales. Obviously, we don't want to put products together that aren't performing well on Amazon. So the better the best seller rank and the more sales the product's getting each month, that's going to increase the score as well. You'll also notice that most of the products that are going to come up as suggested ideas are going to be small and lightweight. The smaller, the lighter, the better. So that also plays a factor in the opportunity score. Something else that weighs on that opportunity score is the number of sellers. Now for these products, we don't want to look at products that are hard to get our hands on or they're private labeled things. We want products that we know are selling really well and that we can get easily. So for the number of sellers, the higher, the better. So that's the layout of how the software works and how we are able to generate these ideas. For the filters, again, the score goes from one to five. So if you only want to see ideas that have a really strong opportunity score, maybe you'll set this to a minimum of four. The lighter the weight, the better the score, but you could also filter this in. If you have a specific category or niche in mind, you can come here and even filter that in. So let's go with grocery and gourmet food. You can even put in keywords if you have specific keywords. Right now we're coming into the holiday season. We have Thanksgiving coming, we have Christmas coming. And when I think of those holidays, what I think of is cookies. I know a lot of people are going to be making cookies during the holidays. So let's put in for a keyword cookies. Even in general, I know that cookies is something that pretty much everybody loves. So this could also give me some ideas of some brands, different varieties that are going well together. Because typically, if I'm only selling one bag of cookies, the profits aren't going to be great on that. Cookies are usually something that isn't too expensive. And if the product itself isn't very expensive, then that means that I'm not going to be making much money on it. So rather than selling one box of cookies, maybe I could find three boxes of cookies that they're all pointing at each other and put them together. Let's run a search on this and see what it pulls up. We have some Cooper Street Bakery cookies. I've never heard of that brand before. So this is also a good place to start getting some new brand ideas as well. Over here on the side, I can see the sales rank for each product, the estimated sales, and the number of sellers. So this seems like a really strong brand. The sales rank is very strong. The estimated sales looks good. And the number of sellers, I can see that there's quite a bit of sellers on these. So these should be a product that we can too get our hands on. They're lightweight, so that's perfect. And then here you can see the price of each product separately. Now down here is where the power really is. If you sold each of these products separately, 
three separate listings, the total price would be $16.78 for the customers, but your net would only be $2.77, which that is not very strong for three separate orders. And that's because on each product, you're paying a fee. So your total fees are going to be $14.01 estimated to Amazon. But if you took these same three products and put them together and sold as one unit on one listing, look how that increases your profits. Your fees are nearly cut in half, which that saves you in your pocket. So your net now would be $9.51. But keep in mind that this is an estimation and that what the numbers say here are not set in stone. The way that the numbers are worked out is by assuming that you're selling the bundle together for the same price as the individual units would go for. So individually, those units would go for $16.78, this is assuming that your bundle is also selling for that same price. And it's also assuming that you're in the same size tier class. So again, this is an estimation. But the real power here is the ideas that are generated from this. You're going to see products come together and be pointed at each other that you might not have ever thought of putting together. And again, just because we suggest three products together doesn't mean you need to take that to heart as well. You could put two products in here. You could put four or five products in here. And again, the real power with bundling is to ensure that nobody else can come in and get on this listing. So something to actually put in there too is like we talked about in those other videos, making sure that you have something branded in there that nobody else can reproduce. Here we have some Walker's shortbread cookies. That's another brand that I've never heard of, so that could be something I could pursue looking at. And this one looks really interesting. We have some sugar cookies here with some icing. So that seems pretty ideal for a listing to put together because number one, like I said, we're coming into the holiday season. I know a lot of people are going to be making cookies and all of these things are things I can definitely get my hand on. I see the Betty Crocker brand here, and that is a brand that I know I'm on gated in. Selling these specific items separately, a net of $12.43, but putting them together, a net of $19.31 estimated. So this is definitely generating some ideas for me now of a listing that I can put together very easily, get my hands on these products easily, and get a lot of sales from. Next, what I do is I open up a Word document. Some people might use Google Sheets. It doesn't really matter, but you need to start getting your ideas down on paper and running the numbers. I'm going to title this Cookie Bundle. Insert a table. And now what I'm going to do is try to find the very best products to put together, put the products here, put the prices here, and I'm going to put another column so that I can also put in my source links. This will be the product the price and the source link. Now I'm at Google and I'm going to put in the brand Betty Crocker and sugar cookies. I like the idea of going with the sugar cookies because that's a pretty generic one that I know quite a lot of people like. If I make it so that it's too specific, like ginger snaps, I'm pretty sure that that's probably not going to be as favorable as something that I know is just more of a generic cookie, especially during the holiday season. This is something where we could do a lot with. We know that we could use cookie cutters in here. We could use frosting. We could do icing. So there's a lot of options here with the sugar cookies. So that's why I'm sticking with that kind. I can see that Walmart, I can get these sugar cookies for $2.47. Someone asked me the other day if I open up a ton of different wholesale accounts to put my bundles together. And I think they were pretty surprised when I told them no, that I don't. And the reason why I say no is because I really don't need to with a lot of my bundles. Think about it for a second. Walmart and Amazon are super giants. They are getting tens of thousands of sales per day. So the products that they're selling here at Walmart, they're going to be really close to wholesale prices anyways to begin with. Because what their game is, their game isn't having a really high profit margin. Their game is having a really high sales volume. So they don't mind getting less than a dollar in profit per sale because they are making such a substantial amount of sales per day.
So what I typically like to do is take the brand name that's in my bundle. So we're, in this case, it's Betty Crocker and find it somewhere at like Walmart or Target where their stuff is going for really cheap anyways because they have such a high sales volume and not necessarily a really high gross profit margin. So because Walmart is selling these so cheap anyways, I really don't need to try to pursue opening up a wholesale account with Betty Crocker. I can just get my stuff from Walmart. Sugar cookie mix, $2.47. And I'm just going to copy the URL and insert it here as a link. So I have the main piece in my bundle with that brand name attached to it. I'm going to put that here. Betty Crocker. Because remember, that's the really important part of building these bundles and not having to run PPC on them is by having that big brand name there that people are already searching for. Next, I know that I want frosting with my sugar cookies, but the problem is what kind of frosting do I get? So now I'm going to go to Amazon to guide that for me to see what's popular in frostings. Typing frosting into the search, let's see what's coming up on page one with a strong rank. So right here on the front of the page, I also see the Betty Crocker brand again. That's pretty reassuring knowing that it's coming up strong on page one, which is great because using the Betty Crocker cookie mix, it kind of makes sense to put the Betty Crocker frosting with it. I can see that the chocolate frosting right here, the rank is 23,000. It's in the top 100 in grocery and gourmet food. I see these Betty Crocker listings all over page one. So let's just type in Betty Crocker and then narrow down our selection from there. Going with vanilla seems to be smart because especially if I'm thinking around the holiday time, I know a lot of people that like to put food coloring in their frostings and make them different colors. So if I went with something like chocolate, that would make it so that they can't do that. So it's a good idea of putting things in your bundle that are not too specific. I mean, personally, I don't like chocolate frosting. So if I saw a nice kit put together for making sugar cookies with my kids, but it had chocolate frosting in it, that would definitely make me look away from it. So I feel like going with vanilla is a pretty safe choice. And then again, it gives people that option where if they want to food color it, they can. Because if I had chocolate in there, they wouldn't be able to do that with the chocolate. Oh, here we go. We're seeing a bundle pop up right here. Bundles are so great because if you were to just sell this cake mix on its own, how much profit are you going to make? If you sell this spatula on its own or if you sell this frosting on its own, there's really not any profit. But once you put these things together, decrease your fees to Amazon and increase the value to the customer, that's where the magic happens and that's where the profits really start coming in. So bundles are so great, especially for products that are kind of cheaper in price where you typically wouldn't make a profit on them individually. So we also have this rich and creamy frosting. Oh, and look what popped up. That is actually too funny. So when I first started putting bundles together, before I really knew how to get rid of the competition and really put a bundle together. This is one of the first ones that I did and it definitely failed miserably. I did not put anything in there that was branded and you've probably already seen this if you watch videos on my channel, but at one point this had over 70 sellers on it. When I first started selling it, it was going over $20 per package of just cookie mix and the frosting. And because I didn't do it the right way, Anybody could jump onto this and they did and the price just went way down. I think it's under $5 now, but it was definitely a really good learning experience for me on how not to do bundles. Both of the frosting seem to be performing pretty fair to each other. And again, running it into a Google search, I can see that the rich and creamy and the whipped go for the same price. The cheapest, again, is at Walmart, and it's $1.74. So even though I don't have in mind yet specifically which one I want to go with, I know that it's going to be one of these two and that the price is going to be $1.74. I'll leave the link blank for now because what's really important here is that I'm building the bundle, I'm getting all of my ideas down, and that in the end, I'm going to be able to have a final price so that I can put that into a sales estimator and make sure that my bundle is going to be profitable. So now I have my sugar cookie mix, I have my vanilla frosting, a price point for both, and they're both the Betty Crocker brand, which is great because I know that's a brand that is in high demand and sells really well. Now I need to think about the components of my bundle that are going to make it specific to just 
me. What I really want to get in here is some cookie cutters. So let's go back to Google and see what we can bring up for cookie cutters. Now you don't have to go to Google to find these products. You could also go to Alibaba or AliExpress. But the reason why I personally don't like to go down that avenue, yes, maybe it looks cheaper for a price point, but then you also have to figure in your landed cost. Uh, shipping can be substantial. And also I don't get the products as fast, right? If it's coming overseas, that's going to take longer. So I like to start here and see the different brands, the different stores where I can get things. So here's a couple of important ideas that I'm keeping in mind when I'm doing this. Number one, I don't want these cookie cutters to come from Walmart. One of the key points in building bundles that other people can't reproduce is mixing your vendors. If I'm just getting everything at Walmart, that makes it really easy for somebody else to copy that and jump onto the listing. So what I want to do is find somewhere else. I'm also not looking for things that are on sale. So these could be cute cookie cutters, but I can see that typically they go for $15. And I want something that I'm not going to have to rely on reordering just when there's a sale going on. I want to be able to get this stuff at what it sells at every single day so that I know I can replenish it for the same price month after month and keep getting the same profits. So now is when decisions really need to be made because if you are just going with something that's seasonal, then you know that it's probably not going to sell really great year round. These cookie cutters right here, super cute, but those are only going to speak to people during Halloween time. Really cute dinosaur ones here, but again, are dinosaur cookie cutters going to speak to a large group of people? Probably not. But who's to say that you only have to have one listing? I could take the same sugar cookie mix with the frosting. I could have one listing that has some fall cookie cutters, another listing that has the dinosaur one, another listing that has the Halloween one. And then from there, I could really test it out and say, okay, which one is getting the most sales? So yes, decisions do need to be made at this point in time to see what am I doing for this specific listing, but this is really opening up the doors for a ton of listings. Something like this is really cute. I like that it has that container there, but what that's going to do is that's going to make it harder for me to package because that's pretty big and bulky. So I'm going to steer away from those type of cookie cutters. These are really cute and really unique. So it comes with the different stencils and two different cookie cutters. I know that I preach not getting into things that are seasonal, but this could be a really good opportunity to make money on get in, get out. Halloween's coming up next month, so that would definitely give you enough time to order the stuff, put the listing together, and get a lot of sales on. But again, keep in mind that if you choose something that's seasonal, it's not something that's probably going to sell well year round. But just to give you an idea of things that speak to me. So I'm looking for things that have those big brand names attached to it and things that are unique and high quality and things that I can get for pretty cheap. But it is quite a bit of time and work to create a listing. So for me personally, I don't typically do those listings where, yes, you're going to sell a lot for a couple months, but then you're not going to sell anything. I'm more for the listings that are selling year round. So even though those Halloween ones were cute, me personally, I'm going to look for something that is a little more generic and could sell year round. Something along the lines of this is definitely up my alley, maybe like hearts or stars or circles. A shape that's not going to just target a small subgroup of people. This I love. So here we have a circle cookie cutter and I really like the packaging. That is super cute how you can see like the emoji in there. I feel like that's really going to draw people's attention and it's only $1.49. So let's put that one into our bundle. Copy the link. I think this bundle is coming along really well. We have the cookies, the frosting, the really cute cookie cutter, and the price is really low. My products aren't very high in weight. And I really like how on Profit Guru for the bundle ideas, how it had icing in there. A lot of people are creative with their cookies and they like to draw with the icing. So let's put some icing into this bundle to really increase the value to the customer. So I have two Walmart products, one from Joanne Fabrics, and with this icing, I'm going to want to mix the vendors again, make it really hard for somebody to be able to reproduce this. So here at Party City, 
they have a one ounce Wilton icing writer in black. So let's see if they have anything else available here at Party City. Color mist, that's kind of a cool idea. Although anything that sprays, I would be hesitant to think that maybe it might have like a hazmat warning. Sprinkles, that's something else to consider putting into the bundle. So they have the writing pen for $2. They have some red decorating icing for $2. So they have a lot of options here. This one I actually do really like because it has the tip with it. So that's something I could feature in the bundle. And there are a variety of colors here. So let's go with this one. And now we're also getting that big brand name Wilton that we can put into the listing. For this listing, I'm now going to stop here. I feel like there are just so many things that go with sugar cookies that we could just come up with an endless amount of listing ideas for this. We could do some for birthdays, some for different themes, for different seasons. So this is a really good idea that we found using Profit Guru bundle ideas. Now, if you don't have brand registry with Amazon, that's not saying that people can't jump onto this listing, but by mixing vendors, you're making it a lot harder for them to do because people that like to jump on other people's listings, they do it because it's easy. They don't want to have to create their own listing. So if you're really mixing vendors here and they don't really know where to get these supplies, then you're definitely decreasing the odds of somebody jumping on. However, that's where branded packaging comes into play. If you have your brand registry and and your branded packaging and your trademark and you're all good to go, then that really eliminates people being able to get on. But that's not to say that you have to have brand registry to put bundles together. You don't. But I do know that poly bags are going to cost me roughly a dollar per one. So I definitely want to figure that into the total bundle price. What I would do at this point is now find a listing on Amazon that is comparable. So I can see here we have a sugar cookie mix, some icing, some cookie cutters, and this is something that's definitely comparable to mine, but I definitely would want to make sure that my images were a lot stronger than this. As a consumer on Amazon, looking at this listing, it definitely doesn't excite me very much, and that's why I don't put together my own pictures for the listings because the listings really speak to people. I always go to Fiverr and hire somebody to make really good images for me. But the point of this is to try and generate what my estimated fees will be. So I take something that looks like it's probably around the same weight, size, things like that. And I'm going to copy that ASIN and we'll bring it to Profit Guru Amazon FBA calculator. Based on all of this, I can see that the fees are estimated to be $6 fulfillment fees and $3.38 selling on Amazon fees. So the fees I can say are probably going to be maybe around $9. And again, this is just an estimate. You're not really for sure until you actually create the listing, but this is just to give us a broad idea. So that means potentially our total with those $9 fees could be $17.70. Then if I run the numbers in this tool, the product cost of $8 without the Amazon fees, this is estimating that the fees would be about $10.38. So the other one was saying nine, this one's saying 10. So I can probably figure it's going to be somewhere around that price. But this is helping me to get an idea of what to actually list the product for so that I'm going to make money on it. And estimated if I list it for $23, I can see that the profit should be around $5 per unit sold. So that's pretty good. So I know that my list price, I'm going to want to at least make $5 profit. And that means I'm going to have to list it around that $25 mark. So that's not too bad. This really did not take a lot of time to put together. I feel like this is something that would perform really well and we'd be making around $5 profit every time one sold. So that's why I really love using this because it gives you such a great starting point and gives you so many different ideas of products that are pointing at each other and that customers are going to like to purchase together. Just from seeing that one cookie with the icing listing, I mean, I literally could probably make eight listings right now. I could do one specific to Halloween, to Christmas, to a dinosaur theme, to a princess theme. There could be so many different listings just from seeing that one bundle idea. 
So I highly encourage you to come here and to start playing around with it and see what type of bundling ideas you can come up with just from this idea generator. Something else you can also do is if you find a product, but it's not making any money individually on its own, you could even put the ACE in here and see if the bundle idea generator can come up with something to put it with. But I really hope that this video has shown you the bundling power that this software has in getting you to come up with some really good bundling ideas. So again, maybe I want to put a pet bundle together. I could just put that category there and search. I love playing with this feature. I could be on it all day and just looking at different products and opportunity scores, seeing what points together, and then from that, now forming my own specific bundle. This is just such a great starting place to really get some good bundles together. So I highly encourage you to head over to Profit Guru and try it out for yourself. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, consider subscribing to our channel so that you never miss one of our videos. Also, down in the comments below, go ahead and pop a comment to us and let us know what do you think of this bundle bundling idea software. And if you try it out, definitely let us know how it went for you and if you were able to find some really good ideas for products to bundle together. That's all for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.